Uh, Want to play some bear stuff while we've got a minute or two? Why not? We are sure. now just over a week away, Yurko. Thank goodness. A week away from the NFL draft. And, you know, there's been a lot of talk about what the Bears might do at nine. I think it's the most fascinating thing. Certainly, after one, things could get interesting with Jaden and Drake May and who's going up to potentially get J.J. McCarthy and what do the Bears do at nine. I think it's uh, amongst most of us here, I feel like, we all kind of agree if one of the big three receivers is available, and those big three would be Harrison, Neighbors, and Adunze. There's really no feasible way Marvin Harrison is there for them at nine. No. But if Neighbors or Adunze is there, I think the general consensus amongst most of us is they should stay put and draft Adunze or Neighbors. Seems to be it. But there's a lot of traction right now from national and local writers, and they start to hear things. Some of it could just be classic old miss or disinformation, but you're starting to get this, like, mock draft and you're, you're starting to see these mock drafts where the bears are moving out of nine again this is locally this is nationally peter schrager's we talked about his latest mock yesterday was not what he thinks should happen but kind of what he's hearing and brad biggs wrote about the bears moving out of nine and i think josh schrock's latest mock had the bears moving out of nine with one of those big three receivers still on the board. This is Mel Kuyper Jr. with Waddle and Sylvie yesterday, what the Bears should do at nine. I think they have two options. I really do. I, th I thought about this a lot with, you know, during the course of the weekend and talking to people in the league and friends and everybody you know, that have an opinion, and they try to put it all together. But I think Romo Dunze, if he's there, you don't think about it, you just take him. And you have to be prepared for all the options. That's what these teams are doing these weeks, preparing for any possible scenario. And what do we do? If this happens, how do we deal with it? What's our, what's our, what's our decision going to be? You, you don't have two hours to think about it. So at the end of the day, if Romo Dunze happens to slide to nine, I'm taking him. I'm with Mel. He's there, you take him. Neighbors, same thing. Keenan Allen ain't getting any younger, Yerk. Bayless Jones looks like a bust. Maybe they keep him around with the new kickoff rules. Maybe he's like kind of a specialist, little tricky kind of gadget guy that they can incorporate from time to time with his skill set of being speed in the offense. I don't know, but it's not relying on Bayless Jones to be any part of your Nothing. consistent receiving court. Yeah. Probably not going to happen. Not. Tyler Scott will give another chance to because it was a rookie year, but it was a very... My God, I wouldn't even say uneven. It was just mostly a bad rookie year, unfortunately. And maybe he can get better. You don't want to totally rule him out after just one well, year. There but were chances for him to make plays, there, and he didn't make them. That's true. That's it. I can't even say uneven, Yurk. It was just a bad right. year. You didn't really see a flash or two, you know? So it was just a bad year. And with Keenan Allen not getting any younger, like, it seems to make a lot of sense. Stay there if one of the guys is available and take him. This is Albert Breer earlier today with Cap and Hoodie, his weekly visit. Uh, but take a listen. This is about the Bears looking into moving off of number nine. One thing I've you know, I, I've heard on the Bears over the last um, over the last couple of weeks, I'd say, is that they're investigating moving up. They're also investigating moving down, and they may prefer to move down. Now, I think part of it's going to depend for them on what happens with the top receivers. Like, does Harrison make it to them? I don't think so. Does Neighbors make it to them? Probably not. Could either of those guys make it to them and put and be in a position where maybe they could make a short move up and get one of them? Um, you know, I certainly think that that's something that could be in play. Um, you know, but absent, you know, a circumstance like that, my, my, my feeling would be if Brisbane Harrison are gone, if Dallas Turner's gone, a lot of people expect Dallas Turner to go eighth to the, um, to the Falcons. Um, could they trade down? And could they trade down and accumulate a little, a little bit more draft capital? And could they accum accumulate a little more draft capital and get a pretty good offensive line than, say, in the mid-teens somewhere? I think they probably could. And, um, you yeah, know, I think they could potentially could have a trade partner in Indianapolis, maybe somebody like that coming up, um, you know, maybe Jacksonville looking for an offensive skill player. If one of those skill players falls into that range, it's a lot like, you know, and these reporters hear so many different things. And again, a lot of it is strategically leaked because certain that like the team w might want a narrative pushed right now, you know, like a lot of that could be what's going on. They could move up. They could move down. Yeah, no kidding. There's a lot of like the your original you, you gut know what feel. I mean? Yeah, your original gut feel for whatever you had at nine after going through the the paces and going through all the names that may or may not go in there. I think the, the simplest thing that we've thought of over time is 
if one of the three would re- receivers is there, they take them. If not, then they trade down. That's what I've always thought. Yeah, you have. It hasn't changed. You've been pretty consistent it's on that. It's been consistent, and th- I think that's what they're going to end up doing. Then the decision is, do they go left tackle? Mm-hmm. Do they go pass rushing uh, defensive end opposite of Montez Sweat or athlete opposite Montez Sweat to get to the quarterback? That, that's the decision then you make. Because at that point, you're not taking a receiver. Now you might get a second-round pick, and with that second-round pick, you've got to decide, do you go receiver, or do you shore up the center position, which um, I still think hasn't been answered. Even though you wasted a fifth-round pick there on Bates. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Gosh, it's hard. I mean, I to think they just wasted a pick like that. Yeah, well, to think that, yes. I give them a little and bit because of they wasted they obviously a fourth like rounder. Something since they it. wasted a fourth rounder on Keenan Allen, uh, it, that that almost dictates to you that they might not want to lean in the direction of taking a receiver. I think that'd be short sighted, though, especially if one of the big three are there. Unless they think with the quarterback, Tyler Scott is going to be a normal player. You think so? Like they're willing to give him? Unless a... they believe that. Yeah, I don't know, man. When when you hear Waddle talk about some of the deficiencies he saw, that's like that's not a quarterback thing. That's like a guy struggling to track the ball in the air. Yep. And, like and that's then, a receiver and, and thing, and not and a quarterback a guy thing. Who has a problem of just putting his hands up and going get the and getting the ball? Right. You don't need to jump. Put your hands up and go get the ball. Yeah. That that seems like a receiver thing, not a quarterback thing. So I worry about that. I think it'd be short sighted. Well, we got Keenan Allen in here. We'll figure out. How long he's going to be on our team? We don't really need to address receiver. No, I kind of think you probably should. I, I, I think you should, and I wouldn't outthink it. Like I like the way Mel summed it up. I don't think you outthink it if a Dunze is there, if Neighbors is there. Certainly, I don't anticipate Harrison or Neighbors being there. We'll find out a week from tomorrow. But one of those, uh, one of those guys there, I don't think you outthink it. I, another mock draft I saw today was I think it was Jason Leisure at the Sun Times had. The Bears still passing on Adunze with him being there. And he goes a couple of spots later, and he had them take an Olufushanu as the second tackle off the board after Joe Alt. Uh, everybody seems to think Joe Alt is definitely going to the Tennessee Titans. That's been a big one. So he's got him taking Olufushanu out of Penn State uh, with that second first-round pick and still bypassing uh, the opportunity to draft someone like Roma Adunze, whom I love a whole heck of a lot. So we'll see. Uh, we got maybe a little time for phone calls here. 312-332-3776. If you've got thoughts on the draft, as we inch closer and closer, just a week away. Baseball coming up at the bottom of the hour. Connor McKnight's got your pregame for White Sox and Royals, and it is a straight doubleheader today. And I know it looks uh, a little ominous right now, but we've been told by Tracy Butler and the fine folks in the meteorology department that no rain, nothing's going to derail the festivities on the south side today. Even though, like I said, it looks... a uh, it looks like it might rain any minute down here at State and Lake, but uh, they're going to get both games in, and we'll have them for you. We've got a four-pack of tickets for Saturday's Wolves game. You want to give these away now? What do you think? We Why not? Right Absolutely. Yeah, and I think we have a four-pack tomorrow, too. Is that what you said, Adam? Yeah, Wolves, good. huh? So uh, the Wolves, this is it. I think this is the, the home stretch of the regular season for the Wolves at Allstate. Uh, it all starts at Allstate Arena on Saturday at 7 with the Salute to Military Families Night presented by Kia. No better way to finish the regular season than on home ice. Great rivalry game, the uh, Rockford Ice Hogs for a family Sunday. So that's this fun weekend. You can buy tickets now online at chicagowolves.com. We are Chicago. We are hockey. We are the Wolves. Let's give If you can use a four-pack for Saturday night's game, and who couldn't? Great experience over at the Wolves games. Uh, caller 10, you win right now. Nice and simple. Nice and tidy. Caller 10, 312-332-3776. You just scored some Wolves tickets. It's Carmen and New York.